listeners and subscribers hope all is well so i've talked about this before in the past on my channel but really i wanted to dive down into this a little bit deeper um and, and go into it a little bit more uh, i wanted to think i was thinking about doing a upload uh, once a week that is a little more uh, more full length if you will you know like 20 minutes or more or in that neighborhood and i, I wanted to keep most of my videos under 10 minutes because i know the, you know the attention span but eventually i do want to take this content and expand it to be something a little bit longer so go ahead and fasten your seat belts right so i've showed this before i've i've, I've, I've shown when I was talking about um, fluoride and our drinking water and, and things because what really what we're talking about when we're talking about a, a depopulation agenda is the four major things that are included in this that is food air water uh, and medicine okay and we'll get into those uh, I'll try to be as brief as I can but really uh, what we're talking about this shows the fluoride how it has had a significant role in the insect control industry since about 1896 okay and these are just a couple of patents on fluoride rat poison and insecticides one of the examples of that is a sweeney's sodium fluoride roach killer uh, it kills cockroaches crickets water bugs and silverfish and um, here we have the you know the product registration number and what it's used for insecticide and uh the per a percentage by mass 40 40 percent sodium fluoride so this just shows you what it what it is and they have other examples of that and uh what i'm getting at is this sodium fluoride it has a let's let's, let's get into what it is right at least according to wikipedia Sodium fluoride is an inorganic compound with the formula NaF. It is a colorless or white solid that is readily soluble in water. It is a common source of fluoride in the production of pharmaceuticals and is used to prevent cavities, right? Right here, because it says one of the uses is fluoride salts are often added to municipal drinking water as well as certain food products in some countries, or as well as certain food products in some countries, rather, for the purpose of maintaining dental health, right? It says that fluoride enhances the strength of teeth by formation of fluoropitate. <laughs> I'm probably, you know, butchering that, right? So looking down here, the other uses it has, it says sodium fluoride is used as a cleaning agent. Sodium fluoride is used as a stomach poison for plant feeding insects. That goes back into the insecticide. The safety here says fluorides, particularly aqueous solutions of sodium fluoride are rapidly and quite extensively absorbed by the human body. Fluorides interfere with the electron transport and calcium metabolism. Calcium is essential for maintaining cardiac membrane potentials and in regulating coagulation. It also goes on to talk about uh, other side effects here but i think it's very interesting that in the same page it talks about uh, fluoride salts being added to drinking water in some countries and the united states is one of them uh, it, it talks about the safety consequences right down here uh, on, on the same page it's, it's very interesting uh, especially when we go and talk about how it was used to be used as an insecticide so why would it be used in our drinking water? Yet they tell us right here, fluoride in water is safe and it works. More than 70 years of scientific research have consistently shown that an optimal level of fluoride in, com in community water is safe and effective in preventing tooth decay by at least 25% in both children and adults. Okay, so simply by drinking water, Americans can benefit from fluoride's cavity protection, whether they are at home, work, or school. You see how they try to sell this? Yet on the back of your toothpaste if you turn it around it says you know sodium fluoride uh right? so any keep out of reach of children <laughs> uh if more than used for brushing is accidentally swallowed get medical help or contact a poison control center right away that's absolutely incredible so here you have uh right on the back of your toothpaste because most toothpastes uh contain sodium fluoride it tells you right on the back there to you know don't and don't and don't swallow this stuff you know if it's more than used for brushing is swallowed get medical help or contact a poison control center right away that's because this used to be uh poison for you know you've got this for roaches uh it was used for poultry lice as well it had many uses but none of them were <laughs> were beneficial so now they've said that 
we have uh, it in our drinking water and it's safe and it works. At least that's what 70 years of scientific research has consistently shown, so we can't argue with that. So moving on from uh, what's in our water, at least concerning fluoride for now, uh, we have what is in our air, right? And I was making the point in a video previous, if you've been following this channel, then you know I've, I've talked about geoengineering before and how people talk about climate change and global warming, but they don't often include the subject of geoengineering in their conversations, which you would think they would, in, which you think would be there because it's one of those big question marks that even the scientists who are involved in doing these experiments and, you know, on, on the cutting edge of this technology, uh, the bleeding edge, if you will, supposedly this stuff has been going on for a long time, but they, they say it's being implemented now in these scientific ways. Uh, how, how can you talk about, you know, climate change and global warming without uh, considering the effects of geoengineering? And this is just a, right here from, you know, Harvard's Solar Geoengineering Research Program. They, uh, talk about what is geoengineering geoengineering geo excuse me geoengineering refers to a set of emerging technologies that can manipulate the environment and partially offset some of the impacts of climate change right and some of the ways that is this is done is not just harvard but you have this weather modification incorporated where they talk about cloud seeding and cloud seeding is just one of many ways that they've been using um, geoengineering methods weather manipulation to um, or weather modification to control or try to promote uh, certain atmospheric conditions, right? In this case, it's getting, um, trying to increase the precipitation of clouds. Here we have solar radiation management, which is, which is just another form of this uh, climate engineering, which is trying to, you know, curb the effects of global warming. And one of the proposed methods of doing that is by uh, using aerosols and other methods to inject those chemicals and heavy metals into the atmosphere in order to either reflect the sun's light back at it and cause a global dimming effect or to promote uh, precipitation in arid climates where you're seeing i don't know uh, California where they've been in a drought, right? So that's one, an, another one. And stratospheric aerosol injections. And I'm going through this really, really briefly because I'll leave links in the description for you to check out on your own because I can tell you what this research, the research I've done and the conclusions I've come to, but uh, that's really more for, for you to do. I'm just giving you the tools to make that um, more, more available. So stratospheric aerosol injection, I'm giving you the names that these programs go by so you can do the research and ask yourself, uh, what, what are the potential side effects of these? Because, you know, scientists don't exactly have this 100% figured out. Uh, and, that, and this is just one avenue, right? The, the geoengineering. But another one is, um, this is a study from the USGS, right? Um, the US Geological, uh, Geological Survey. And they found glyphosate, the herbicide found in many Midwestern streams, antibiotics not common. In some areas, they are pharmaceuticals. Some areas, there's not, not as common. But uh, what had happened was, is researchers with the U.S. Geological Survey recently investigated 51 streams in nine Midwestern states to determine the presence of a wide range of herbicides and uh, their degradation product, uh, byproducts and antibiotics. Herbicides were detected in most water samples, which were collected to coincide with runoff events following herbicide applications, but antibiotics were detected in only 1% of the samples. Okay, so what is glyphosate, right? Glyphosate, because this is what they found in uh, most of these Midwestern streams. Glyphosate um, trade names include Roundup, Touchdown, Rodeo, and others. Is an in is an organic solid of odorless white crystals. It is a non-selective herbicide used on many foods and non-food crops, as well as non-crop areas such as roadside. So this stuff, and yeah, stuff is everywhere. This is what they're out there spraying uh, on the road to try to keep down, uh, you know, weeds and other invasive species of plants. Um, what was found? A total of 154 water samples were collected during the 2002 study in nine Midwestern states. So nine states here. Um, a total of 154 uh, water samples were collected during the 2002 study in nine Midwestern states. Glyphosate was detected in 36% of the samples, while its degradation products, um, something I'm not going to try to pronounce, was detected in 69% of the samples. The highest measured concentration of glyphosate was 8.7 micrograms per liter, well below the 
MCL 700 micrograms per liter, right? So this is what is just going to show. Now, these are some of the dangers that glyphosate can pose to the human body, at least is one of the studies, right? In this abstract, it explains, um, you know, glyphosate, most commonly known here to people as Roundup. It's used, it's a herbicide that's used worldwide, okay? And the industry touts how it's not toxic to, chem uh, it's, it's not toxic to humans, but uh, many independent studies and scientific researchers or scientific research is beginning to reveal that it actually does have um, side effects that we do not want, right? So example, common weed killer glyphosate increases cancer risk by 41%, study says, and this is just from February 14th, uh, 2019. And it, this, I'll again, I'll leave links in the description, and it includes uh, everything here from the analysis and the draft risk assessment that was uh, produced by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 2017. That is this thing right here. Uh, talking about glyphosate. So glyphosate does not have a good reputation. And the thing is, is this is when you're driving, you know, I used to live in California and I did work out in Northern California as well in the Chico Paradise areas. Um, now the Paradise is leveled by the fires. But uh, they have, you know, plenty of farmland and crops out there and they would come, you know, they'd spray their crops with their crop dusters and I'd have to drive through that in my van and everything but I'd get that you know they get real close and the, the thing is there's, there's aqueducts the, the aqueducts that run from you know through paradise and down through oh boy what is it Butte and everything down towards Sacramento that that was open water <laughs> those water sources are open there and I mean especially up there carried by the dam uh, that's that's open water sources and it's absolutely exposed to these um these crop dusters, which are spraying, you know, glyphosates, pesticides, and herbicides, keep the bugs off the plants, keep the weeds away from the crops, right? And that's it. They're showing up. And now it's saying uh, the Environmental Protection Agency and other uh, agencies, independent studies are saying, well, this stuff is not good for you. It's not healthy. So you have this multifaceted assault, right? Your, your water supply. And, and Florida is just one element, right? They have a uh, what do they do? It, it, this this chlorine that's in the water, right, to, to purify it. You know, chlorine has been shown that in some studies that it can turn uh, cholesterol into plaque. And the number one leading cause of death in you know America, right? We've got cancer or heart heart disease and cancer. And then the third leading cause of disease, right behind that, uh, supposedly is the American medical system. And we'll get into that. Right. So medical errors rank behind heart disease and cancer as the third leading cause of death in the United States. And that's according to John Hopkins research. So we have uh, heart disease being the number one here. And, you know, the chlorine in our, our drinking water, could that be converting our, our especially since we have a very high fat diet, could that be converting uh, cholesterol into plaque and laying down plaque and arteries and have anything to do with that? Some some research, you know, suggests that. Uh, but again, medical errors ranking, you know, third, and this is according to uh, Johns Hopkins, and there's other issues as well uh, on how you want to rank this and scale this, but it, it just doesn't bode well, because you're talking about when you when you do get sick, right, from your, from from drinking water and this stuff is again fluoride isn't i've said it before fluoride isn't something that's going to kill you outright all at once um drinking doesn't do that smoking doesn't do that it's it's accumulative and you know by the time you're however many years you've been consuming this and it starts to have its degrading effects on you now you go to the for-profit medical systems or you know the medical system where they get away from treating the illness and and they're just treating the symptoms almost but just looking into this it's just uh, it, it's an assault on all fronts. And then the food, lastly, you know, we were talking about water, we're talking about air, we're talking about medicine, and you know, now we're talking about food. And this is where it gets kind of touchy because the number one thing th people will talk about, at least uh, the majority of the conversations that are had out there in the realms when we're discussing food is uh, GMOs, okay, and uh, artificial flavors and artificial colors. Now, GMOs, when you have Monsanto and all these uh, biotechnological, uh, biotech industries getting involved with your with food, you know it's a bad, you know it's a bad deal, right? But because of the lobbying power of some of these corporations and companies and businesses, it's very difficult or it can be very difficult to discern, you know, fact from fiction when we're doing, you know, research and studies or when you're going out there to try to find them. Because a lot of the research and studies that you'll look at, um, 
they have you know their scientists and their you know group of individuals who go to make sure that the image of these companies aren't aren't tainted so it, again the let just i think the best way to put this is you're going to have to do your own research and come to your own conclusions when you're looking at something like genetically modified food um and if you're looking at something like artificial flavors now you can if you look for the dangers you will find the dangers okay but try to uh, look at the studies and what studies are based on because sometimes you'll have some information and in, on your news sites or your um, something that'll pop up on Google and it'll all be based on the same study there might be two or three studies that were done and they're all loosely talking about the same thing and you know basically reciting um, rephrasing some of the key um, points in those articles or, or those or those studies so what you have to do is you have to be very careful when you're approaching these food I, I again I could tell you about some of the research of you know the artificial flavor dangers and some of the side effects of the artificial colors that it has on children and you know some of the most harmful ones um, I think they a lot of people look at the red food coloring and the yellow food coloring I believe it is these are these are things you're going to have to do on your own again I'm just trying to give you the tools to make that necessary because I know, you know any any of your health professionals, your fitness professionals, they wouldn't recommend a diet filled with you know, artificial colors or artificial flavors. And while they will say in moderation, um, it may not have any adverse health effects. The thing is, is people aren't just having you know a bag of chips. Uh, or a bag of artificially flavored chips, right? Their buns are artificially flavored. Their their hot dogs are, are genetically modified. Uh, then they go and have their their sugar, their their soda, right? And then this is just they, there's so many things out there. It's it's compounding. So you're not just getting it one meal a day. Uh, if you're if you're picking your food up and you're not being wise and you know turning over the back of those labels and finding out what's in it. You, you're being exposed to this in more ways than one, right? You, you may say that you don't drink tap water, but does the companies that process your food use tap water? Do the companies who use the uh, to make your soda, because you know soda is just a concentrate in water nowadays anyway, do they use tap, uh, tap water, fluoridated tap water? Uh, yeah, uh, how many companies have been actually the bottom of the water bottle companies like Arrowhead and what was the other one? Uh, crystal geyser i think it is that were exposed for basically just using city water okay uh this stuff it's it, it's it's real you're being exposed to it in more ways than one and you it just the best way is not to try to avoid it altogether but to educate yourself and hopefully just by knowing that these threats are out there or knowing that these are they have potential side effects to you know your food your water and your air just being cognizant of it can help you avoid uh, some of these things, not all of them, but some of them, uh, I hope I've been able to articulate what really what's going on here, because it's a multi, it's a multifaceted agenda, really, when you're looking at it. And when you look at the corporations and the businesses, and they all seem to be, they all go to the same schools, the same institution, they're similar elite schools, similar institutions, they're being taught similar things, they go to the, the same training programs, right? So they, they learn how to manage their companies and businesses the same way, which is why you see this almost ubiquitous effect across, you know, whether you're in law enforcement, retail, or uh, insurance, you see this ubiquity uh, about how things are run, where companies are either cutting corners or cutting cost and that manifest in different ways but really you, you're seeing this transition happening in the work world and all not just in the work world or in the business world but across uh, multi-facets and you've got to wonder in, in some way is this not a concerted effort right by the the powers that be because when you start to look at these these businesses again they're all taught you know similar the same way running things uh, in similar in similar ways at the very top, there's only a few people that are controlling any of this or have the power to, um, you know, promote any uh, of what of the these kind of initiatives and campaigns in the first place. Because why would and a lot of these chemicals and things are, are banned in, in other countries? The um, so there's some artificial flavors and artificial colors that are that are banned in other countries that we still use. Some countries don't do water fluoridation at all 
okay? And there are some places in the United States now that are trying to get rid of their water fluoridation. All that to say, uh, we could question whether or not that this is a concerted effort or we could just try to clean up our acts and try to educate ourselves to make sure we aren't uh, as readily exposed to this stuff in the first place because many people don't know about water fluoridation. Many people don't know about fluoride in their toothpaste or the side effects of it. Many people don't know about glyphosate and how that shows up in their water and in their air samples. If they educate yourself, you become aware you have a better chance of being able to fight back against some of this or uh, reduce your exposure, most importantly. Anyway, I think I've dragged this on long enough. California Carter, signing off.